Hi, I'm Dr. Candice Mathers with Life Blossom Wellness, and if you have trouble sleeping, then keep watching for some tips on how to get better sleep naturally. Hi, I'm Dr. Candice Mathers with Life Blossom Wellness, and maybe you have trouble sleeping. Maybe this is something recent, you've had some issues with your job, or maybe you're having personal issues going on, and that stress is spilling over into your sleep time, so you're not getting the quality sleep that you're used to. Or maybe it's something that's more chronic, maybe you've even been diagnosed with insomnia, you've been dealing with this for years. Either way, there are some really good things that you can do right now to start improving your sleep quality. But before we get into that, let's just talk about why sleep is so important in the first place. So anyone who's gone a night without getting good sleep can tell you that sleep is essential to actually just feeling good, having a good mood. If you go even longer, maybe a week or two without getting good quality sleep, you can even start showing symptoms of fibromyalgia, pain all over the body, and even depression. In fact, the lack of sleep is linked to everything from obesity and heart disease to type 2 diabetes and, as I mentioned before, depression. So getting good quality sleep is essential. Now, there's lots of different reasons why you can have insomnia. They range from lifestyle reasons to genetics. There are genes associated with lack of sleep, and there's even something that's associated, that's something that's called um, fatal familial insomnia. And that's actually a prion or a prion disease with misshapen proteins. But we're not talking about anything that's that severe. We're talking about your run-of-the-mill insomnia, which doesn't feel like run-of-the-mill, especially if you're experiencing it. So what can you do right now to start getting better quality sleep? The first thing I want to talk about is sleep hygiene. As a naturopathic physician, there are lots of supplements that I can recommend for you to get a good night's sleep. But if we're not getting to the root cause of why you're not sleeping, then those supplements aren't going to be beneficial for you in the long term. So what do I recommend first? Making sure you have good sleep hygiene. Making sure that you have a bedtime routine. Making sure that the room you sleep in is dark and cool. Maybe if it's noisy outside, you live in a city, you live next to a train station, you have some white noise to drown out the constant chatter of the outside world. If you don't have this space, it's going to be hard for you to get to sleep. It's especially hard for shift workers. So I, I always recommend for shift workers, you get the, the light blocking curtains and even masks that you put over your eyes to simulate being in a dark room because melatonin, a hormone secreted by the pineal gland in the brain, is actually responsible for our circadian rhythm or our daily rhythm in life, our wake, our sleep-wake cycle. And melatonin is secreted optimally when it's dark. So you need to make sure you're getting that melatonin secretion and you need dark to do that. So that's number one. Make sure that you are having a good quality place to sleep. Make sure that it's dark, it's cool, it's quiet, or there's white noise. So the next thing that I recommend is a bedtime routine. If you have children or you had children, then you know how you get a child ready for bed. You start with their bath and then a story and then you know, tucking in kisses goodnight and eventually having them go to sleep. Well, this is actually done to prepare them for bed, and you should do the same for yourself. Now, I'm not saying it has to be the same exact thing with the bath and the story and then um, tucking yourself in. I'm not saying that it has to be that uh, rigid, but a bedtime routine will start to trigger your brain and tell your brain and your body that, hey, it's time to go to sleep, especially if you're doing this regularly. So I do recommend having a nice warm shower or even a bath if you can do that. If you can't do a bath then just do a nice foot soak and try and relax. A lot of us like to have a glass of wine before bed but alcohol can't contribute to insomnia over the long run so I don't recommend that. I recommend just a nice warm cup of water and a nice warm shower 
and something nice and cozy especially if it's cool outside like a nice cozy robe to, to snuggle into and just to make yourself feel a little bit pampered and relaxed try to get into the habit of being mindful about putting away all the stresses of the day so perhaps you had a stressful day at work and you're, you can come home, you can tell your spouse or your significant, significant other or whoever it is that you want to talk to you about, write it down and let it go when your bedtime routine starts. Don't stew over anything because that's going to just take away from your quality time to get to sleep. So something stressful happened, write it down before bed and tear it up, throw it in the trash, burn it, however you want to get rid of it. And then start your bedtime routine with your warm foot soap or your warm shower. And then when you get into bed, make sure that there are absolutely no screens on. And I'm talking about no TVs, no laptops, especially cell phones, because those are the biggest culprits. I personally do not have a TV in my bedroom for this very reason, but I have my cell phone in my bedroom. So I am guilty of this as well. You see, our, a lot of our electronics emit blue light and blue light has been linked to a decrease in melatonin secretion and an increase in alertness. So if you have your cell phone on in bed, you are sabotaging your melatonin secretion and you're going to become more awake. So a lot of us don't like to turn off our cell phones for a various number of valid reasons. You can always download apps like um, Flux, or um, you could put on, like if you have an iPhone, you could put on the night shift and that will help to filter out some of the blue light. In fact, there was one study done that actually showed that individuals who wore glasses that filtered out blue light when the sun went down, their melatonin uh, increased by 58% and their sleep quality actually increased as well. So you can always try getting some of those glasses. I think um, you can get them through Amazon or downloading one of those apps or you could just turn off the electronics completely and have that nice dark room that we talked about previously. After you've gotten your bedtime routine, you can always incorporate some foods into your diet that's gonna actually help to promote melatonin secretion, and get you a good night's sleep. Two of the foods that come to mind immediately that actually have melatonin in them are tart cherry and walnuts. So walnuts have melatonin in them about maybe 2.5 to 4.5 nanograms per gram of walnuts, of uh, melatonin, excuse me. And then tart cherry juice. Tart cherry juice is actually used in chronic pain and inflammatory situations. So if you're not sleeping due to pain, especially pain of osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease, then tart cherry juice is actually very beneficial. Take it right before bed, or maybe half an hour before bed. You can also start eating more germinated brown rice. So germinated brown rice has something called gamma aminobutyric acid or GABA in it. Now, GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter that actually ups the parasympathetic nervous system. So when you think about nervous systems, there's the fight or flight, that's the sympathetic nervous system, and then there's the rest and digest, which is the parasympathetic. So GABA helps to actually increase the parasympathetic nervous system, and that was going to help you to relax and help you unwind and help you fall asleep better. So germinated brown rice, you can get that from Amazon as well. The biggest supplement I recommend for insomnia is magnesium. The reason why I recommend magnesium is because it's just essential for the body. The body uses magnesium for 300 plus reactions and many of us just don't get enough magnesium because we don't eat a lot of the things that have magnesium in it like dark leafy greens. Also, magnesium helps with pain. And as we said before, if you're in pain, you're going to have a hard time getting to sleep. Magnesium can help with muscle pain and even help to um, relax blood vessels to lower blood pressure. So magnesium is also very easy to get into the body. And there's different ways that you can actually take it. You can use magnesium sprays and magnesium oil to do for topical, um, like putting it on your skin. 
to get it into the bloodstream or you could do magnesium foot soaks or you can even ingest magnesium by you know just taking it orally and so I, I love magnesium and the magnesium that I recommend for sleep and for calming is magnesium glycinate and magnesium glycinate is really calming and it'll help you get to sleep now be careful of taking too much magnesium because you can have uh, increased bowel movements and loose bowels if you take too much but usually with magnesium glycinate that doesn't happen very often because it's very well absorbed and very well tolerated by the body so these are a few tips that you can actually incorporate right now to get some sleep naturally and if you're actually having lots of problems falling to sleep and you've done all these tips feel free to contact me or contact your local naturopathic physician and we can actually come up with a unique individualized plan to help you get the sleep that you need and deserve. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. If this video helped you at all, feel free to like and subscribe and let me know what it is that you want to see because I'm making these videos for you. So once again, I'm Dr. Candace Mathers with Life Blossom Wellness. Make sure to let your health bloom with Life Blossom Wellness. Until next time. Thank you.